So what's it like to travel to Vancouver Island on a ferry with your RV? We're doing it right now, so stay tuned to find out everything you need to know to have a stress-free, comfortable voyage. Booking the ferry online for an RV is pretty easy. On the front page of bcferries.com, select One Way or Return, choose your departure and destination ports, pick your departure and return dates, and you're off and running. From mainland BC to Vancouver Island, there are two main departure port options, Horseshoe Bay, just north of the city of Vancouver, and Tawasson, which is well south. On the island, there are three main arrival ports, Departure Bay in Nanaimo, which connects to Horseshoe Bay, Duke Point in Nanaimo, which connects to Tawasson, and Schwartz Bay near Victoria, which also connects to Tawasson. Once you choose where you're going, indicate how many passengers you'll have and select traveling with a vehicle. Most RVs will be taller than seven feet, so select that option and enter your vehicle height, including any roof racks, air conditioners, solar panels, etc. Then select your vehicle length, if you're towing, this is the length of your tow vehicle, plus whatever you're towing all hitched up, including the hitch length. So just a quick tip when you're making your booking, make sure you get the length right. I know our trailer length, it's 25 feet, and I know our truck length, it's 19 feet. So I was just like, okay, yeah, quick, add that up, round up to 20, yep, 35 feet. Wait. I only realized about two weeks before we were heading out that I had made this mistake, so I phoned them up to make the change. We were able to make the change on the trip back, but the trip there was already fully booked. So we actually had to change our departure point and change our sailing. So make sure that you get your lengths right the first time. Don't make the same mistake I did. The next screen will show you all the different sailings available on that day. If you're looking to save money, try traveling at off-peak times. Once you select a sailing, you'll have the option to either prepay for the entire fare or just pay the reservation fee and pay the remainder just before boarding. Note that the cheapest saver fares must be paid in full in advance. The at terminal option is in case you decide not to make a reservation and travel first come first served instead. We don't recommend this option during the summer or around holidays and long weekends as the ferries do get quite busy and you might have to wait several sailings before they have space. Once you've chosen your sailing times, you can either log in or if you don't have an account yet, just select check out as guest. Enter all your payment information and once it goes through, you'll have the option to create an account if you haven't already. We recommend this step since it makes it easier to track your reservations and make a change if you need to. That's it, easy peasy. One tip pre-boarding is to maybe bring some food along. The food on the ferry is not bad, but it tends to be expensive and there's often long lineups. If you have a reservation, you need to arrive within a specific window. So you can arrive anywhere from 60 to 30 minutes before you're sailing, but you need to arrive to get ticketed in that half hour window. So once you check in, you get this little slip that tells you which lane to drive into. So we've just checked into the ferry terminal here at Tawasson and uh, we were asked when we got to the gate how many propane tanks we have and they gave us a sticker for each one that we are carrying and we have to affix them to the um, valves as indicated. She also double checked the length of the full vehicle and trailer and thank goodness we're good for that. <laughs> And then she told us to go into a specific lane and now we're sitting here waiting. So now I'm gonna go put the stickers on the propane. All right, so we have to close both of these propane valves and we have to put the label on. Uh, from there to there probably, yeah. Sure. Now what this means though is that our fridge and freezer are gonna turn off. Obviously closed because it's just sitting there just turning that off the trick will be to remember to turn it back on <laughs> all right now we can sit and wait so once you're on board can you just stay in your rv and hang out unfortunately not typically you're parked on the lower decks and while they're sailing you can't stay in your vehicle so you need to exit your vehicle and look for the nearest stairway to go up to the main deck Okay, so as you know, we travel with Benny, our cat, and unfortunately, pets are not allowed on the main decks of the ferry. Totally sucks, I have to say, BC ferries, but I understand why. Pets have to stay in your vehicle 
or they do have a pet zone. So we've chosen to keep Benny in the truck during the sailing. I've set him up with a portable water dish. He's got a small litter box available as well. He's got his blankets. It's a space that he's familiar with and I think he'll just be a lot more comfortable there compared to the pet zone where people may be coming and going. There might be noises he's not familiar with. So the layout of every ship is a bit different, but they all generally have a cafe or various restaurants, coffee shops. They usually have a little gift shop as well. Um, some of them get fancy, like this one has a buffet, not open right now. There's also indoor and outdoor seating on the sun deck. Um, so if it's nice out, you can go up there and check that out. The ship captains are usually really, really awesome. They will call out or make an announcement if they see any fun wildlife. Some of the wildlife that call the sea waters their home include humpback whales, orcas or killer whales, sea lions, various porpoises, occasionally gray whales, although I don't know if they come into the strait between the mainland and the island. If you're looking for a quick snack, they've got vending machines and apparently they've got candied salmon jerky. So it's about halfway through our voyage. Time to go check and see how the Benny is doing. We'll take the elevator. Uh -huh. We're on deck four. Nope. We're on deck two. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's deck four. There. Check on the kitten. All right, we checked on the Benny. He seems to be doing okay. He's obviously not enjoying the trip that much, but it's not much longer now. So how long is the voyage? Well, our sailing today was one hour and 35 minutes. It's usually between one and a half hours and two hours. While you're enjoying your ride, you can also get all kinds of pamphlets, and, like this one of Tofino. Hint, hint, that's one of the places we're going. Mel doesn't have too much more time to shop. So we're just about there and they just made the announcement. So we're gonna have to walk back down to the truck pretty soon. All right, Mel got her shopping fix. Now it's 
back to the truck. And we remembered that we're in Starfish. Deck two. Or four. No, two. <laughs> Feels a bit lonely down here on deck two. Well, look at that, we found our truck. So what's it like to travel to Vancouver Island on a... Wait. On a what? <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Keep Benny in the car, or uh, in the truck. So yeah, we've chosen to... <sighs> it's not quite clear how this goes. Does this go over like that? I think it goes over it, yeah. Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.